Before we start with this lesson, let us get back to what you had studied in class 11 when you were introduced to protozoans. We said that these protozoans, they are very much notorious types. All right. Now, why they are notorious? Because they are responsible for causing certain diseases, in fact, many diseases in plants and animals. And over here in this lesson, we are going to deal with two specific protozoans which cause diseases in human beings. One will be entamoeba and the other one would be plasmodium. Now, when I say plasmodium, so we are dealing with malaria. Now, malaria is caused by a mosquito. Mosquito itself is infected. The poor mosquito has been infected by the notorious protozoan parasite that is plasmodium. There are three types of plasmodium which are known for their notoriety. Plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium vivax and uh, one more species. This is the generic name for it and uh, depending upon the type of uh, malaria that they cause, we have named them accordingly. Now, this plasmodium is a protozoan and it is uh, a parasite and it has two hosts. One being man, that is one of the hosts and other being Anopheles mosquito. Which mosquito? Female Anopheles mosquito. Now, there is a condition that female mosquitoes, they need human blood for completion of their uh, reproductive cycle. All right, they feed on that, they need it. And how intelligently this plasmodium has used Anopheles to infect human beings, okay? It could be put as human, man or woman can be infected equally. They have equal probability of getting infected by the disease called malaria. Now, this Anopheles is the secondary host for the protozoan and man is the primary host. Oh, pardon me, it is opposite. Anopheles is the primary host and human is secondary host. Now, in the terms of parasite which is having multiple hosts, you must remember that the host in which the parasite undergoes sexual reproduction is the primary host while in the inside whose body there is occurrence of asexual reproduction happens to be secondary host. So, inside man this plasmodium carries out asexual reproduction and it completes its sexual reproduction in the primary host that is Anopheles mosquito. Now, what happens is this uh, plasmodium in its stage of sporozoites. in its stage of sporozoids infects the human RBCs, okay. Now, that means whenever mosquito bites a human being, it is putting the sporozoids which are the infectious stage of plasmodium for human being. These sporozoids, they would enter and go into liver cells. Inside the liver cells, they are going to divide asexually and go to RBCs. Okay. Now, these uh, sporozoids which have reached the liver cells, they go successive stages. There are certain stages that uh, once uh, there is uh, merozoid, cryptomerozoid, megamerozoid and uh, schizont is formed, trophozoids are formed. So, we have the RBCs infected by these sporozoids which have reached the human body through the agency of anopheles. Now, the division is asexual division. Now, what happens over here is these RBCs, they become the site for formation of male and female gametes. Where are they produced? They are produced inside the RBCs, okay. These RBCs, they burst down and they release a chemical known as hemozoin. That is why the people suffering from malaria, they have extreme feverish chills. They feel very, very cold. That is because whenever RBCs rupture, they release this compound known as hemozoin. It is re re responsible for raising the body temperature. That means the person would suffer from feverish chills, right? After 
about of period they are bound to suffer the feverish chills now these male and female gametes are in the rbcs that means in the blood stream now the mosquito will come some uninfected anopheles will come and feed on the blood this part takes place inside the human being the sporozoites they infect the liver cells from the liver cells they go to rbcs rbcs are infected and they produce lot many uh, these uh, plasmodium stages okay and they form the male and female gametes as well now one uninfected anopheles comes and you know bites the human being takes up the blood and inside its gut goes the male and female gametes okay inside the gut of anopheles the male and female gametes are passed and here takes place fertilization fertilization results in the formation of zygote it forms a stage known as oocyte inside the lining of digestive system this oocyte moves towards the salivary glands of anopheles where they get converted to sporozoid and these sporozoids whenever the mosquito is going to bite someone else would be transferred to the human being so you see this was the primary host now how it happens is supposedly there is an anopheles female mosquito she has been infected by the plasmodium okay now the plasmodium has infected the anopheles in such a way that it has entered the female anopheles in its gametic stage the fertilization would take place and formation of sporozoite would take place inside the salivary glands now the salivary gland of the mosquito are going to sp store the sporozoites the sporozoites being present in salivary gland whenever this female mosquito is going to bite any human individual the sporozoites would sneak into the blood stream of the human being and reach the liver cells inside the liver cells this being the asexual host or the secondary host they divide they move to the rbcs inside the rbcs they further divide they form the gametes and then gametes enter the anopheles again when he uh, when she would bite the infected individual so it's not the mosquito which is responsible mosquito itself is infected but this plasmodium does not harm the mosquito it harms human beings to such an extent that this um, malaria was a big time problem for human uh, generations in uh, as uh, 19th century okay so there was a person known as sir ronald ross he had studied about malaria and thanks to that we have now an idea how this uh, malarial parasite infects us we can use preventive measures because this disease is completely vector born now what is vector born that means caused by the vector if we aim to kill the vector then we can achieve in achieve the uh the target where we can curtail malaria to a certain extent so it is better to kill the mosquitoes or let not be any place become breeding ground for mosquitoes because if mosquitoes are not present this stage this sporozoite is not going to enter the human body if it is not entering the human body how can this process take place so we aim at killing the mosquitoes and killing the mosquitoes we have many things we have so many commercial products that are uh, part of our advertisement we have uh, mosquito killers we have insecticides we have uh, certain regimes we have our um, uh, cities making sure that uh, timely they are sprayed with those insecticidal uh, chemicals which aim at killing the mosquitoes we have to maintain cleanliness and don't let water stagnant water stay because the mosquito breeds in that area so being a vector borne disease we can control it to a certain extent and once it has occurred there are there are medicines and remedies which could be taken but you must make sure that it is uh, diagnosed at an early stage okay if somebody is having feverish chills and headache and uh, time to time recurrent chills and uh, this because of hemozoin being released the temperature rising too high the person feeling extremely cold could be the symptoms which are pointing towards plasmodium entering your body in the sporozoid stage and further carrying out the processes this is one of the protozoan diseases long one though now we are going to talk about a short topic that is
another protozoan disease but we are not going to discuss so much about it because firstly it is having not many hosts it is having only one host that is human beings it is having one site where it goes and infects that is large intestine so we are talking about amebiasis or otherwise what you call as bloody stool from malaria we move to amebiasis or otherwise called as amoebic dysentery now you can make it out what would be the symptoms of this disease now that i have written dysentery you can make it out what would be the symptoms who is the causative agent of this it is a protozoan known as ant amoeba ant word is used for gut histolytica histo word is used for tissue lytica word is used for breaking down so it is that kind of amoeba which is responsible for eating up the tissue of large intestine it goes and infect the large intestine of the human beings okay there would be cramps in the stomach large intestine the symptom that is blood and mucus rich stool that should make you question your health and go to a doctor to get an antibiotic so that this uh, amoebiasis can be controlled okay it goes inside your large intestine it sits over there it infects it it makes sure that you have conditions like constipation blood and mucus rich stool and stomach ache okay now how do we control it either we once it has uh, caused the disease then we take medication or we control it beforehand and what where lies the answer it is in maintaining hygiene how hygiene because the vector that carries ant amoeba into our body is house fly house fly sits on infected person's stool picks up the spores gives it to the food sits over there and we eat it and we are infected as well so this is also a sort of communicable disease by controlling the house flies sitting on our eatables and by controlling the hygienic conditions we can take care that one does not suffer from amoebiasis which is infecting the large intestine of human beings so this is all about protozoan diseases that you have to study